So today I am here to share with you all some of the lessons that I've learned this month of January. I know the month of January is not over yet. We still have one more day to go, but it's the end of the, the month. Literally, um, it's technically the end of the month. And I wanted to share some of the lessons that I've learned. Um, if you've been following me here, you will have noticed that this year so far, I've been going live every week. Um, the first week of January, I didn't work, but since after the holiday and, you know, got back into work mode, I've been going live every week. So in case you missed any of the previous lives, definitely go and check it out. I think most of them are still saved on my, um, feed. If you miss them, don't worry because I will be sharing snippets here on my feed and in my stories and if there's any of the topics that you're interested in or you want me to talk more about them in details feel free to let me know in the chat uh yeah i hope your month of january went well and that things have gone according to plan if there was a plan as they say failure to plan is planning to fail so i hope you had a plan for january for your life and for your business that you were able to get you know some stuff going so that you could get closer to your goals closer to your dreams um i actually started the year using my girl shade who's a time management coach her um roadmap she has like a goals she did a goal setting workshop which i joined and yes i am a coach and i do i work on productivity with my clients but i I absolutely believe in investing in yourself and invest investing in you know in your in people and Shade is a good friend of mine and a fellow coach and she is a time management coach so I thought she may know one thing or two more than me because that's really her expertise so I joined her workshop and I used um, her um, three-month gold map like a roadmap uh, you see me watching on the side because it's on my screen i will share after the live maybe like a snippet of it on my stories and so i love that because it um the way i plan my goals is always per quarter and then i break it down into month and that's also something that she suggested and this year i'm working with her roadmap um because it's already done by her and i thought at least i can use it and also give her feedback uh, so I'm absolutely loving it. And so I don't know about you, uh, how you set your goals for this year, whether you do this as a quarterly goal or monthly goal, how you break that down. If you're wondering what the best way to do that is, I went live, I think, in the beginning of the the year talking about how to strategically plan your year 2023 and any other year and how, you know, it's really important to look at you know, do the exercise of really going way back to what is my mission, my vision for my life and my business, you know, what are my goals and objectives, what are some of your values, you know, and based on that, see whether the goals that you're setting for yourself are all aligned with who you are, what your values are and the mission and the vision that you have for your business in the long term. And based on that, create goals that are matching and that will allow you to also put, um, a way a systems in place to track it to see how you're doing versus the goals that you set for yourself and so i came on here today to share a little bit about um you know how my month of january has been what the uh, the lessons that i learned um and how you know how i'm doing versus my goals i may share some of the goals with you here and some of the things that i was working on this month and what's coming up for the month of February and beyond. So if you just join, I see Max Nero, I see Emanuela from Patella Fashion. Hey, hey guys, how has your month of January been? Just leave it in the comments here for us to know how your month has been. Did it go according to plan? Were there some lessons, some wins? Let's cheer each other on. What were your, some of your major wins this month? So I'd love to know. So let me know in the um, in the chat here below. So, um, as I said, if you're just joining today, I am talking about the lessons I've learned in January and how my month of January has been and going forward, uh, for the month of January, what I have planned and what some of my, uh, focus is. So for me, let's maybe start with, um, what the goal was specifically. 
So one of the goals that I had for uh, this year specifically, and I focused on also how I can apply that to the um, month of January is I want to serve my community even more and in creative ways, find different ways to serve my community. And not only people from my community, but also other communities that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet. And so one of the uh, ways that I thought about achieving that is to obviously show up more. So, hey, that's why I'm doing more lives. And also um, being, you know, uh, sharing my story with other people on other people's platforms. So doing joint lives, interviews, podcasts, and things like that. So that was my goal. Why did I have that? I wanted to find ways to serve my communities more that didn't necessarily always involve, you know, pay people that are uh, um, able to pay for my services, but also f different ways that I can support people where they at, right? And so the one of the first things that I did this year was have a free co-working session for the entire month of January. And how that looked like is every week I had a co-working session on Sunday. And why I had that is that Sundays is my planning a strategic time anyway. Sunday evening is when I plan and prep for the week ahead. That's when I look at, okay, what I go over my goals again and see, okay, what are some of the tasks that I need to do this week in order to come closer to these goals? And I thought if I'm doing that on my own, maybe other people would need, uh, you know, would want to do that as well. So I extended that into a Zoom session where I invited other women who were also working on their goals and prepping for the week ahead to join us for some accountability and support. And it's been really, really nice. So we did this for the whole month of January. A lot of you showed up, you know, live with me, worked on your goals for about an hour and were able to achieve a lot. And so uh, many of the women that joined said that it's crazy how a little bit of accountability and support goes a long way, right? So I was really happy to see that um, that creative way to support my community worked because many women that joined got extra support and it was free, it was entirely free. And I got to meet other women who were not necessarily part of my community before that I didn't know. So that was really nice. And so that's a win for me and a win for the community. So I'm really happy about that. Another um, thing was how I can also support my community, but outside as well. And the way I wanted to do that is by doing joint live, which I did. If you missed the one I did with Ama from Women is Healing, you should definitely check it out. Um, we talked about all things, you know, starting a business, how to find your purpose and all of that. And it was really great to be on Amma's platform and her community to speak to her, you know, her audience as well and encourage all of us to follow our purpose. Um, so that was a win as well, because, you know, reaching out to others and accepting, being open to share your story to others. And if you've been following me, you probably have seen that I've been interviewing um, female entrepreneurs um for since the month of november uh so far and so every week there has been a video with an interview with other female entrepreneurs sharing their journey and story with us and it's been really nice but i thought it would be good for me to be on the other side of the table not being the one who, you know not the one who is interviewing but being the one interviewed so that was really nice putting myself out there doing these joint um live and I have a couple podcasts that I did uh, recorded already and some are coming up. So that's also another way that I, you know, worked on achieving that goal, which is more visibility, showing up more through these joint, uh, co those um, collaborations. Uh, so I'd love to know for you some of the ways that you worked on, you know, really put into practice um, achieving your goal? What are some of the things that you did that has helped you, that you feel has gotten you closer to your goal? And if you didn't have anything, um, I'd like to invite you now as we're st about to start the month of February to do the exercise that I talked about in the beginning, which is sit down and really think about where you want to go, where you see yourself, you know, going in the next couple of years. Look at this year, what do you think you could achieve and break that down into quarterly goals, monthly goals, and then weekly action plans, weekly tasks. What should you do? What habits should you create or change in order to get closer to that goal? So that was it for some of the wins that I shared with you. And then some of the um, the lessons, obviously there's always lessons. As I said, there's no, um, 
there's no failures, only lessons, right? Um, and there's a lot of changes happening on social media with the recent um, news that we also saw some of you. I didn't watch the video of Tyree. It's just there's so much happening. I also personally had very bad news at the end of the year of um, the passing of a good friend. So it's like there's always something happening. It's like when are we really going to get the chance to rest a little bit? And so with all of that happening, one big lesson for me that, you know, I started to really think about more towards the end of the year with the passing of a friend, but also just recently when you look at Tyree and every day when you look at the news or you just hear bad things happening to people all the time. And I'm not saying that this is new. Obviously, people die and people are sick and stuff happen every day, whether or not we are aware of it. But for whatever reason, I feel like it seems a lot heavier. One of the lessons for me has been to, you know, have a sense of urgency about living my best life, whatever that looks like. And so not being um, lazy, but also not being complacent and think that, you know, nothing is in my hands and just be slow with my life, but really have a sense of urgency to live my best life so that knock wood, whatever may happen, you know, I will always feel like I've, you know, given it my all and I've lived to my highest potential. At least I try to, um, because when I see young people dying every day, stories like we heard of Tyree and other people, it just, the first thing that comes to mind is, wow, this person had so many dreams and aspirations. And I wonder if they were ever able to put that into fruition, if they were ever able to just start something if they were able to impact their community the way they wish they had, if they were sleeping on any goals. And so for me, that is one major lesson that I've learned this year and that I would take with me beyond um, this year and, and hopefully forever is to have a sense of urgency to live your best life. And it doesn't mean, I think I talked um, or maybe did a post about, you know, this whole trend of soft life, blah, 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 and living your best life. And I think a lot of people have this confused with living an extravagant lifestyle, you know, living irresponsibly, you know, you know at least making f uh, financially irresponsible choices where you're living bef beyond your means, you are procrastinating on your dreams, all in the name of soft life. But what soft life means is knowing what your boundaries are, knowing what you're worth, but also being intentional about life. And so being intentional means knowing that life is short and unfortunately the clock is not in your hands. It could happen that you drop that any minute, anything could happen. And so this sense of urgency to live your best life um, is something that I am taking with me um, for good. And I'm sharing that with you, Hope, you know, hoping that it resonates with you and that you will feel this sense of urgency and not put off your dreams and think, oh, I'll just do it another time. Oh, I'm waiting when I have more money. I'm waiting when I have more time. That again, takes us to another um, post. And one of my frustrations is when people say, I don't have time to work on my, um, on my business. I don't have time to work on my goals. I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to whatever it is that they say they don't have time for which is a lie, let's be honest, you do have the time, you choose to use that time to do something else. And I know how difficult it can be, you know, you're maybe working a nine to five, you have kids, believe me, I have three kids. <laughs> I have three kids and as we speak, I've been struggling with a migraine for a couple of hours and I am not for the hustle lifestyle, but I'm for, you know, doing your best and meeting you know, doing your best and I feel like God will meet you more than halfway. And so when you say you don't have time, it's more a matter of priority. And as I said, whenever that idea comes to mind, the thought comes to mind that you don't have time to commit to something you said you would commit to, the way is that you have to repeat that sentence and add, I don't think this is, I don't value this right now. This is not a priority right now. And I love what Emanuela from Patella Fashion is saying is that we make time for everything we want in life. Yes, we do. And so if you're not making time for whatever you say you 
want in life maybe you don't want want it badly enough and how do you know if you want something badly enough is if it's taken from you or given to someone else and when i say taken it's not that you already have it but you see other people achieving it and if it's making you like oh my god it's so annoying you're almost jealous and feeling like i could do this then you do want it but then it's time you start to take action and stop making excuses um because there are people who have less money less time less whatever and are still doing way more than you are right now so i hope that this is a wake-up call to stop procrastinating and to stop sleeping on your goals because life is just too short and i know we all know that we say oh life is too short but believe me once a person close to you passes that's how you realize that wow life is definitely too short so i really want to encourage each one of us to Yes, we have moments where we're like really down and that's why I think it's great to have a community. It's how it's great to have accountability. It's great to have a toolbox that you can go to and know that, okay, this is what I can do when I'm feeling this type of way to help me get out of it. That doesn't mean that you're never going to feel that way. It just means that you're going to be able to get out of that funk a lot quicker. When in the past, maybe it took you about a week or a month you know, to get over it, or maybe a day. Now it takes you a couple of hours. Maybe now it takes you a couple of minutes. What I do, for instance, migraine for me is some, I didn't really sleep really well, so I know my triggers. And so what I'm doing today is after this call, I am wrapping up and I'm going to bed way earlier than I normally do because I'm respecting my, my body. I'm learning that if I do not, you know, trust the process and I don't do what is right by me, Tomorrow and the rest of the week, I am going to pay the toll because I am a homeschooling mama and my kids are home right now. So that means that, especially the younger, she goes to daycare, but three times a week, she's um, like tomorrow, she's home. So that means if I don't sleep well tomorrow, when she wakes up and everybody else, as I'm homeschooling the kids, she, the older ones, she'll be there as well, asking for my, my attention. And if I'm not at my best, I will not survive this week. And so it's really important to know what you need to feel at your best and what you need to add it, you know, put in your toolbox so you can have access to it. Um, so, uh, you know, for those of you who are joining, you know, we're talking about, I'm sharing one of my lessons, uh, some of my lessons for this month of January uh, and my wins. And I'd love to know if you have any lessons that you'd like to share with us that you've learned throughout um, this year already um, and some of your wins because it's important for us to celebrate what we've achieved. So many of us entrepreneurs just shove under the rug. It's like as soon as we have achieved some things, like check on to the next thing. But it's as important to celebrate your wins as it is to work on, you know, getting there. And I think a lot of us forget to celebrate along the way and not wait till we're at the, you know, at the, at the top of the mountain because sometimes, you know, getting to the top of the mountain can be really like a long process. You may get up a little bit, fall back to, you know, levels lower and then go back a little bit. So I think it's celebrating along the way that helps us um, stay strong and, and resilient and keep going. And so I think that was, um, those are two things that I'd like to share with you is that, you know, it's important to realize how short life is so that it gives you a sense of urgency to live your best life. And living your best life means being authentically true to yourself, not living what the best life looks like for someone else, not for your neighbor, not for your colleague, not for anybody, but what your best likes looks for you. And so focusing on that and being intentional, being intentional, knowing that I give it my all. And if I were not to be here tomorrow, if I were not I would not be able to get this chance tomorrow. I would know that I gave it my all and I did my best. And I will be going to bed tonight knowing that I did my best. And regardless of me having a migraine and not feeling well, I showed up and committed to my weekly life. That is something that I want to commit to. Because I feel like sometimes it's the little things. I am still early in this journey of going live weekly for the entire year. Yes, guys, you better hold me accountable to this. <laughs> But if I, for any reason, so something comes up and I use that as a reason not to do it, it will be a lot easier for me next week to miss it. Do you see how I'm saying? So last yesterday, for instance, I go, I went on a getaway with my husband 
And so technically I don't work on weekends, but I have my planning session every Sunday evening. But even though I was a hotel away, I showed up live to have my co-working session with my colleagues. I mean, my colleagues with my ladies. Right. And so it, it didn't take a lot of time away. My husband was there. We were chilling. The camera is out, you know, it's an hour. I already prepped my work before. So I just showed up for the women to be there for them for a source of support and accountability. So I think that is really important for us to commit to the things we say we want to do and to be consistent because it's not going to be automatic. It's not going to be natural until we're like all the way through it. So let's not, you know, give up too soon and think that we've got it figured out. And I, you know, thanks Patricia. I, I'm glad that this resonates with you. I'd love to know what, it, you know, any of the wins that you have or any of the lessons you have for the month of January that you'd like to share with us. Um, the month of January is really long, or at least it feels really long, especially after the holiday season. And that is one of the main reasons I decided to do this co-working session weekly to support my fellow entrepreneurs, because I know how, you know, it's like you're dragging your feet after a while. It's like, oh my God, this month is never ending. And there's so many bills to pay. And like literally every week I had um, something that was renewing because I pay most of my um, programs and softwares annually. And it's like, damn, how many programs, that, you know, do you need to, to, to make your business run? But that's when you realize there's a lot of things that, you know, there's a lot of costs that you have as a business owner, um, that others may not see. And so when they see your prices, they may think, oh my God, that's too expensive. And that takes me to another post that I did, which is why you definitely need to raise your rates this year, if you haven't thought of it yet. And, you know, things that you can do to still make it attainable or affordable to um, a specific group of people that you really want to serve but cannot afford you. And so that's definitely something you need to check out. But I definitely feel like, especially for us female entrepreneurs of color, black women, we need to start, you know, asking, you know, the right rates, rates that are justified you know, by the, the work that you deliver. You need to stop undercharging and charging what you're worth not necessarily because there's there's no price that's going to match your worth right but you need to charge what the service you know the service that you're offering the product level that you're offering you need to charge that and i raise my rates normally every six months right last year was the only year since i started you know my business in 2018 that i didn't raise my rates but this year like clockwork i raised my rates and and the thing is you would think that selling something cheaper would be a lot easier but i beg to differ every time something was cheaper it actually took me more time to sell it than when something was more expensive but that's another conversation <laughs> so if you just joined yeah so we're talking i'm sharing some of my lessons that i've had this month of january and my wins and the importance of you know celebrating your wins throughout the whole process and not waiting till you're at the top of the mountain to celebrate because the life of an entrepreneur does not go this way. It goes this way and then bam, 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 this way and then bam, 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 and this way. So it's really important for us to celebrate along the way and not wait till we're on, you know, at the top of the mountain. Uh, so feel free to share with me any of your wins, any of your lessons you've had uh, in your business this year. If you have any questions, when it comes to productivity, time management, or just starting or growing your business, what are some of the challenges that you experience in your business currently that you feel like you want to tackle this year? You feel like, okay, whether it's raising your rates, whether it's attracting the right um, customers to you, or maybe whether it's retaining more of your customers, whatever it is, if you have any questions, feel free to share it with me. Um, so we're getting to towards the end here. So I shared some of the wins and the um, that I had and some of the lessons as well. But I'd like to talk to you about what is coming for the month of February. So in the month of February, I'm going to keep going with the visibility, right? I'm going to keep committing to my goal, which is my weekly lives, where I'm going to share as much knowledge as I can with you to help you, on, you know, gain more clarity about how you can best grow your business, whether you have a side hustle or you have already you know a full-time uh, business but you're looking to grow it to have more financial freedom but also just time freedom so that you're not the one who has to do it all the time you can delegate easily you can take a couple of weeks off without thinking oh my god my business is just gonna die 
definitely, you know, I'm going to be sharing more stuff about that. And I'm also relaunching my group program, um, which I started in 2020, Start to Thrive, which is all about accompanying you, giving you the blueprint to give you one more, help you gain more visibility, but visibility in the right places. How do you show up to the right audience for them to, you know, understand who you are, what it is that you offer. So the awareness creation, where do you start to gain more of that? So you have new eyes coming into your business, more people getting to know you and building trust with the existing people that are actually following you on your newsletter or whatnot. And then the next step is really, so building that relationship so people understand why they need to buy from you specifically, why they need to work with you specifically. Maybe it's not really clear to them what it is exactly that you do and how you can help them. So that's something that in Start to Thrive, we really look at what is the, where is the gap between what you are doing and what people think you're doing so that we can bring that close and becomes very clear to them what you do and how you can help them. And then the next part, obviously I talk about this in three points, but they're all subcategories, right? When I look at visibility, we look at understanding your niche better, that you know, there's no way we can run away from that. We really need to look at that. Your ideal uh, client avatar, who are the people that you're serving? Are you, you know, trying to serve everyone? Is it specific enough? Is it not specific enough? We need to look at that as well. We really look at your marketing, like, you know, where do you show, how is it, what is the best way to communicate with your, with, with your community? Uh, and then when we look at building a relationship, we look at all the different tools. What do you need to build relationships? Do you need to go more live? Do you have to have a newsletter to nurture them? Do you have to have a Facebook group? Really look at the various options that present themselves and the one that will work best for your business model. And then we look at, um, how do you actually create an offer that they are ready to pay for? And so you may have products or services already, but know that if you're selling a physical product or a service that you have to physically give, there is a ceiling to how much money you can get unless you raise your rates. Another way to do that is turning that service to a digital um, program, such as an online coaching workshop or a course. And that is something that we look at your your uh, um, product suite so the different types of services or products that you offer or that you should offer if you're trying to get the you know the financial freedom that you want what those products or services would look like and whether or not we're able to transform that or add on a digital um, variation so an online offering that will allow you to charge more money or charge different people just have a bigger audience to serve to help and also to be able to take your hands off your business more frequently so that you can actually live your life because the idea here is not for you to leave your nine to five to be stuck in a 24 7 job right it is for you to leave your nine to five so you have more time so you have more money and so that is what the foundational uh, start to thrive program is all about i am revamping it i'm currently re um you know uploading uh recordings on the platform that i'm using for the um, the program so that on your own time you can really look at all the modules that work for you where even if you already have a business maybe you can strengthen some of the foundations look at that and then we have our weekly calls where you can ask me questions and so on and so forth so i have so much that's happening um, for the month of February and beyond. And I'd love to share more about that with you. If you are a current business owner who's looking to grow your business by adding an online component to it, like you wanna add a course or an online coaching program or kind of a workshop, definitely you wanna really keep an eye on um, my page or reach out to me, let's book a call. Let's talk about how your current business model may you know be limiting your growth and how we can add an online component to grow that um you could book a free call with me the link is in my bio just dm me if you can't find it i'll share it with you so we can really look at where there's a bottleneck and what we can do create a blueprint a blueprint so that you have a clear action plan you know what to do and you're not just doing all this crazy stuff and not actually seeing the result so that's what I have for you. And I see Patricia says, 
got some nice insights on how to plan my day and week this month that's really great i'm really happy about that i'm glad you enjoyed these tips uh, I will um, suggest that you check out my feed. I have a couple more of these um, posts that I did about how to plan for your week or your month, things like that. If you are interested to get my free productivity guide as well, where I share more tips, it's a free guide where you have, it's about 20 pages, I think, or maybe less. I probably shorten it now. And I give you um, basically a plan. It's like a planner. And I tell you exactly what are the steps that you can go through to plan you know, to be more productive without overwhelm. And so there is a brain dump. There is a little bit about the Eisenhower matrix. It's really a free guide that can, you can accompany. You could just print it out or use it digitally and use a notebook to do that. And that's what I personally use. And that's what I use for my clients as well. So if you're interested to get a free copy, just DM me and I'll send you the link to the free productivity guide. And if you're looking for more tips on productivity, or as I said, how you can turn either your knowledge your experience and your passion into a online program i'm your girl honey send me a dm and let's talk about that if you already have a current business and you'd like to add an online component to it because that is the way to go if you want to work less and have more money and more freedom that is the way to go i would say so dm me for that as well and i will share all the information with you about that um revamped uh, group program which we're going to be working on but uh, I want to before I go I want to say because a lot of people I spoke I think like last week with a lady who has a beauty salon right and so she has a beauty salon great I'm so I think it's really awesome women like to stay beautiful and all that that's great and I told her once your calendar is booked right you know there's a ceiling to how much money you can make and you literally have to be at the beauty salon every day that you open a week to make money. You can't not be there unless you have a staff, but then you have to pay them and make money. But do you know that you can turn your knowledge or parts of your knowledge into an online program and not be at work and actually make money and over time switch your business model and only do the online programs and not be, not have a bricks and mortar shop, not paying rent and all of that. And it's crazy how she was like, I never even thought about that. I never even thought that was an option for me because in her head, she thought, well, I'm not a coach, blah, blah, blah. I don't know anything. But clearly, you do know something. You know how to make women look beautiful. And make women look beautiful, there's so many components of that information that you can package to into an online program, whether that's a course, whether that's a coaching program. And there's so many clients you can serve in there, right? There's um, you know, other beauticians that you can serve, or you can create something for the actual end consumer. So... I just said that for those of you who may be on here live or watching the replay thinking, I don't have anything to sell. I don't know anything. Like I literally met a girl yesterday. No, was it Saturday? She was moving from one place to another. And, you know, my husband and I have a logistics company. So we have a van that we rent sometimes for moving. And I helped her move um, from one place to the other. And she sent me this lovely review, which I will share in the stories as well. She's like, you made me feel so comfortable and I was really stressed about this move and it, it went really flawless, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I really loved it. And for me, you know, she's a younger uh, sister and it was like my, I treated her like my sister. And I remember in our conversation, one of the things that she said is like, I don't know, because I asked her, she was looking for a side hustle to start. And I asked her, maybe you could, you know, maybe babysit or teach, offer like um private classes to younger students or whatever. It's like, there's nothing that I really am good at. Mind you, this is a student from the university. So clearly she's, at, she's good at something. And the thing is, sometimes we minimize the knowledge and the passion and the experience that we have. If you know how to dress, if people always say to you, girl, I like your bag, girl, you look good, girl, this, girl, that, honey, that's your, that's your experience. If you're good at one thing, whether it's taking pictures, whether it's cooking really well, making nice cocktails, dressing really well, uh, doing DIY, you have something that you know that others don't know how to do. And it doesn't mean that you have to be like somebody else. Be like, oh, but I already saw someone who's doing it. I'm not asking you to be the next Marie Kondo. By the way, Marie Kondo said that. Clearly keeping a house clean all the time is no longer her priority but that's a side conversation but anyway so what i wanted to say is if you're thinking yeah that's all great rose but i don't actually have any expertise i don't actually have anything that i really good at i just work for someone else and i know how to do my job but that's it that's a lie honey i need you to go look at things in your life that you enjoy doing that others have told you that you're really good at what thing people come to you people probably come to you for all sorts of things. 
because you're always good at planning, you know, a trip or organizing like a birthday party or whatever it is. Really think about that and don't think too big. Sometimes it's a little thing that you discount. Those are the biggest money makers and not just money makers, but the things that brings you so much joy and that people are dying to get because it's like, I don't want to do that myself. Like literally planning birthdays. I like the idea of it, but all the logistics, since I became a mom, I'm like, I don't have time for this. I'd rather pay someone else to do it. The older I get, the more I'm like, I'd rather pay someone else to do it. And so people like to pay for convenience. People pay for things to be done for them easier, faster, better. So, you know, anything that you're thinking about, if you're not sure whether an idea or something that you're good at is even possible to turn into a thing, don't sit at home wondering whether or not, just DM me. Let's have a conversation. Let's jump on a call. And I promise you there's something that you're good at that you can transform into an online program. And um, if you already have a business and you don't have an online version of it, you need to do that this year. So that was it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this live. And it's weird because I feel so much better now. Tell you Remember I told you I had a migraine? I'm feeling much better. So see, this is clearly my passion. I enjoy doing this, sharing my wins with you of the year, the lessons I've had this year. I hope you learned a thing or two. Thank you for joining me. If you're watching this on a replay, make sure you also comment in the chat. If you have any questions whatsoever about this or any of the things that I said, um, just send me a DM, leave it in the comments and I will elaborate on it some more. I wish you a happy month of February ahead and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.